Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on conditional split transforms and derived column transforms in integration services. Here's what we'll aim to cover on the tutorial. The first thing we'll look at is what we're trying to achieve, which is actually to marry off Cheryl Cole to one of our trainers, but more on that in a second. We'll then look at how to create a conditional split transform to split a table of data into two or more parts. We'll then look at how to create a derived column transform to create a new column or amend an existing one in a table of data. And finally, we'll complete the project so to get the final output and send it to a SQL Server table. So let's get started. Here at Wise Owl, some of us are avid followers of the X Factor. I'm afraid it's the UK version. And so we've got an Excel workbook of X Factor finalists over the last few years. What we're going to do is import the data, paying particular attention to the mentor column. Cheryl Cole has just got married to one of our trainers, Dave Wakefield, and so we need to change all occurrences of Cheryl Cole to Cheryl Wakefield. Also, we can't spell this person's name. We can't even actually pronounce it. So what we're going to do is redirect all people whose name contains the words Contostavlos down to a path which will then be rejected. The package in SSIS will look like this. We'll begin with an Excel workbook of the X-Factor finalists and we'll import that using a data flow task. If the mentor is Cheryl, we'll redirect the output down this path. We'll then use a derived column task to, re to, or to change Cheryl's name to Cheryl Wakefield and then that data will reunite with the normal data in a union or query to recombine all the finalists together. The final result will be exported to a SQL Server table of finalists, except the Tulisa Contostavlos, that sounded more likely, didn't it, will won't appear in the final results. Her rows will have been rejected. Here's what the final results will look like then. There will be a table containing the mentor name. Cheryl Wakefields will all appear at the top or the bottom, depending on how we do it. Uh, but there won't, in this list, be any Tulisa Contostavlos's those records will have been lost. So let's have a look at the package in SSIS. We've got a control flow containing an execute SQL task. What that will do is just delete all the records from the finalist table to begin with so that we can re-import them. We've then got a data flow task which will import all the X-Factor finalists. And all I've done so far within that is created a source which will take data from an Excel worksheet of Excel Factor finalists. And if we double click on that and preview it, you can see there's the columns contained in the Excel workbook and it's the mentor column we're going to be particularly concerned with. So let's get started with the conditional split task. So what we're going to do is split the data coming out from this Excel workbook into three parts. People mentored by Cheryl Cole, people mentored by Talisa, whatever her name is, and everybody else. And the way to do that, to split data, is to create a conditional split task. So I'm going to add one of those, and I'll rename it to say split mentors, because that's what it's going to do. And then what I'm going to do is run the data from the Excel workbook straight into that conditional split task. What I can now do is configure this and I can have as many conditions as I want. The default output will be called normal people. But in addition to that, I'll have one or more conditions above here, in each, one for each line, which says specifies another data pipe. So let's start with the Cheryl Cole finalist. And I'm going to call that stream of data Cheryl Cole finalists for obvious reasons. What I want to do is find out whether the mentor name contains the word Cheryl. Now I can get at the mentor name by clicking on that column and dragging it into the condition. To find out whether one bit of text contains another, I can use a string function. And users of other Microsoft software will find a lot of these familiar. The one I want on this occasion is find string. If I click on that, you can see that it says it returns the location of the specified occurrence of one string within another. So I'm going to drag that down into the condition, and it has three arguments. The string within the bit of text within which I'm searching, the string I'm looking for, 
and the occurrence I want to return, so whether it's the first or the second or subsequent occasions. The character expression is just going to be the column called Mentor. So I can click on that and drag it onto the character expression argument and it will automatically replace it. You can see that my whole expression is still red because it still doesn't make sense to integration services. The next thing I need to specify is the string I'm looking for and I'm going to look for the word Cheryl. But I can't actually remember how I typed it in so I'm going to use a fairly standard trick throughout Microsoft software which is instead of just looking for it in the, co in the case I typed it in, I'm going to convert it using either the upper or the lower function. And all these functions do is to convert text to upper or lower case. And because I've typed in Cheryl in uppercase, I'm going to have to type in the word upper in there and close the brackets there. So what this is doing is taking the mentor's name, converting it to uppercase, and then searching within that for the word Cheryl in uppercase. So now it doesn't matter in which case I typed in Cheryl, it will still work. The occurrence I'm looking for is the first one. And I'm hoping that when I click off that row, it will turn black. It hasn't, it still doesn't understand it. And if I let my mouse linger over it, it will tell me why. It tells me the answer is in Boolean. I don't know if you read that briefly. And that's because I haven't actually specified a condition. The find string function will return the nu character number where it found the word Cheryl in the mentor's name. And what I want to do is say that that should be greater than zero. So what I'm saying is try to look for the word Cheryl within the mentor's name, and if it finds it at a character position, all well and good. So that completes my Cheryl Cole finalist condition. I'm going to add one more output, which is going to be to Lisa finalists. And this is going to do pretty much the same thing. But instead of looking for the word Talisa anywhere within the mentor name, I'm going to, just by way of variety, see if the first six characters of the mentor's name equal Talisa. So I can do that rather than using find string, I can use the left function, which takes a string of text and picks out a given number of letters from it, beginning at the left hand side. I'm looking within the mentor name, but again, I'm nervous whether I typed in mentor to Lisa in lower or upper case. So I'm going to do exactly what I did last time and convert it to lower case. And I'm going to pick out six characters and I want to say whether that equals to Lisa. Except I need to make sure I type to Lisa in it in lower case. And when I click off that, it still gives me an error. And the reason for that is because I haven't actually specified the right equals sign. This is a condition, and in SSIS, just like in C-sharp, you have to put two equal sign to specify equality. So let's just sum up where I've got to then. The stream of all the contestants are going to come from an Excel workbook. The ones where the mentor's name contains the word Cheryl, in any case, are going to go down one pipe. The one where the mentor's name begins with the word Talisa are going to go down a second pipe and all of the others are going to go to the default output called normal people. So I'm going to choose OK to confirm that and just do a quick test to see how well it's working. The quick test is going to involve the Talisa contestants. I'm going to put a union all query there to mop up all the data and I'm going to configure the output from the split mentors conditional ta split task to run straight into that. And I'm just going to take the Talisa finalists. For the moment, they're the only ones I'm interested in, and choose OK. And then I'm going to right-click on that pipe and enable the data viewer just to see what's flowing down it. OK, if I now run this package, what I'm hoping to see is the data viewer containing the list of all the contestants whose names began with Talisa. So that looks like it's working. What I can now do is get rid of my union all query because I'm naturally going to lose my Talisa finalist now. And what we're now going to do is show how to configure uh, integration services so the Cheryl Cole contestants automatically get renamed. So instead of being mentored by Cheryl Cole, they're being mentored by Cheryl Wakefield instead. So what we now have is a conditional split transform, which is splitting the data into three paths. And what I want to do is, for the contestants who are mentored by Cheryl Cole, I want to rename every occurrence of Cheryl Cole to Cheryl Wakefield. 
To do that, I'm going to use a derived column transform, which will either create a new column or replace an existing one. And what I'm going to do is feed the output from the conditional split transform into that, choosing to take the shell coal finalists only. What I can then do, I'll just rename the derived column transform to say that Cheryl has married a wise owl, which I think definitely deserves an exclamation mark. What I'm going to do now is reconfigure this derived column transform and create a new column within it, which I'll call new mentor. Now I can do one of two things with this, either, either create a new column alongside the existing ones, or I can replace an existing column. I'm actually going to create a new column alongside the existing one, and I need to say what the expression for that column will be. I want to replace every occurrence of coal with Wakefield, and that sounds like a string function to me. Specifically, it's going to be the replace function, so I can drag that in, and what I'm going to do is replace all the characters in the mentor name. So I can drag the mentor name and use that as my character expression. And the other two arguments are going to be the thing I'm looking for, which is the word coal, and the thing I'm replacing it, which is Dave's surname. It's gone black, so it must have accepted the syntax at any rate. Bizarrely, it's created a length of 570 characters. If I choose OK to confirm that just for the moment, and go back to the path feeding into it and edit it by right-clicking, you can see for the metadata for that path, the mentor name actually only had 255 characters. What I think is going on here is that Integration Services doesn't actually know how many times the word coal is going to appear in each name, and so it's erring on the safe side and creating a very long, arbitrary long length of 570 characters. Unfortunately, this will cause problems further down the line, because the SQL Server table only has 255 characters set aside for that column. So what I'm going to do is cast the expression to be shorter than it currently is. I want to keep the same data type, dt underscore wstr, which is a Unicode text character string. But I want to change the length of it to 255, and that will truncate it at 255 characters. So I can choose OK to confirm that, and that completes my derived column transform. What I now want to do is to reunite the original normal people and the normal people with Cheryl Cole renamed. So what I can do is add in a union all transform to recombine the data. And I'll call that reunite normal people and Cheryl mentored. I seem to have lost the ability to type. One more go. And what I'm going to do is run, firstly, the normal people down into that. And because I've still got the Talisa finalist, which I want to discard, I have to choose the output, which is normal people. What I can then do is take the finalist mentored by Cheryl Cole and feed those into the union all query, or the union all transform. If I then double click on the union all transform to reconfigure it, I've got one change I need to make. For five of the six columns, everything will stay as it is. But for the mentor column, yes, I want to take the mentor from the normal people as it stood, but from the other derived column transform, I want to take my newly derived new mentor column, which is exactly like the mentor one, but containing the word coal, Wakefield instead of coal. So I can then choose OK to confirm that, and all I have to do now is to send my data to a SQL Server data source and test out my package. So just to complete the picture, I need to send the output from my union all query and feed it into my SQL Server table. And this should be a revision of things we've done in previous tutorials. I'm going to, I've already got a SQL Server connection manager set up. So I'm going to add a destination I'm going to say that I'm using my SQL Server Connection Manager and I'm going to feed the output from the union all transform directly into that and I'll call it final table in SQL Server. What I can then do is reconfigure this final destination. The first thing I need to do is say which table it's feeding into. It's the one called TBL finalist. And then what I need to do is set the mappings. 
It's only been able successfully to map one column, the series column, and that's because I've done some renaming. As it happens, the name will go on to the finalist name, the category I'm going to ignore, the mentor will go on to the mentor name, and the finished will go on to the position, which holds the position of the finalist. If I then choose OK to confirm that, I should now be in a position to run my package. So let's see if it works. If I click on the play tool, I'm hoping to see a lot of green ticks. Excellent. I'll just stop running that for the moment. And if I now look at SQL Server, and if I just execute my package, you can see that I've got all, I've got 104 rows. There were originally 109 taken from me. I've lost the five um, finalists who were mentored by Talisa. The only difference this has made is the sort order has changed. The first thing it did was add the normal people and then it, it added the ones mentored by Shell Cole and that's why they all appear together at the end. If I didn't want that to happen I would have to implement some sorting algorithm. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on SQL Server Integration Services, Conditional Splits and Derived Column Transforms. You can find lots more training resources on SQL Server, .NET and Microsoft Office at www.wiseowl.co.uk.